so today we are doing exactly one uh, 35 minutes 6 35 serving 35 all right so today we are dealing with conditional statements in python a conditional statement uh conditions that you set in your program but it has to be fulfilled for a particular action for a particular action to to take effect there are so many conditional statements in python that we'll be looking at when you take of the PHP, C++, other languages, you have so many of them. You have the if, the if else, the while loop, the for, those, those, those are conditional statements. And today we'll be looking at such a thing. Now, last week, we dealt with list so what we'll be doing here is to leverage some of the things that we learned the previous weeks over here we will leverage them we use them to accomplish our mission i remember we wrote a variable we define a variable called candidate candidate and we put so we are going to declare a list and we said this is how to declare a list we do it open bracket open so open parenthesis you will put our list so john the next one nana Ayariga Ekia Donko Mrs. Konedu I did my Rollins and then the last name uh, who is there my good friend Gan Kofi Gan so now we declared a variable name called candidate and we are saying that okay we are working at easy and so these are the people that you are the names you are compiling as presidential candidates so now you have the name over here you want to use a, a keyword called in and then an if statement over here on the in keyword over here is to search for something to make sure that oh okay the thing exists if it doesn't exist it will give a different issue or it will output with a different thing. if it exists fine so we can see that for name in candidate candidate should print the name or let's say let's make it very interesting Good luck. And there is. And then we know. Now, I said this the other time the name. 
you just define it and it can be anything so don't be confused you can say okay candidate over here then you can instead of name you can say for candidate for candidate in who is candidate 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 for candidate who is in that list which list the list called candidates you should print it and so good luck good luck in the race this is the name of a variable that we've not defined so you have to remove it and put candidate here now if you print it out this way it's going to generate an error so what do we do we spoke about string concatenation you use the word you use the plus sign to do it let's run it and see oh okay i have to run this thing first so now what happens is it goes into the candidate list you have a candidate we have a list called candidate which contains all the names of the candidates that you have then they are saying that okay take the list open the list candidate and find out do we have the candidate in this candidate list yes we have it if we don't have it so you over here the print statement you are saying but it should print good luck in the race to that particular candidate so it's going to continue to print the print the print now we have way okay so we have to give a space over here good luck in the race john good luck in the race nana good luck in the race ayaga good luck in the race if i don't call so that is how it works we can decide to use um, an if statement over here no let me not come to the if statement yet we'll get back to it so we've what we did is to find if a value exists in a list so it is this. if you are a web developer or a web administrator and you are writing a code and you want to you have a list of people that you have banned from entering or logging into the web application you can say that okay let me use another one let's say you're a teacher a headmaster and they are students that you suspended and other people would want to come to the class now you want to make sure that whoever is coming to the class is not a student that has been suspended so let's find let's find suspend that student so let's see the name of the Australian student. Oh, what do I use? I've been a course. James. Oh. Add your mind. Prince. Calvin. So these are the names of suspended students. Now you want to make sure that any student that is coming should not be a suspended student. So let's create Another record allowed a 
student so what happens the, we can use the input function over here to ask the student when you come mention your name so I'm say input enter your name to uh, access so now what do we do you have to find out that the name that this student is going to enter is not part of the suspended student so we use what we call the not function to do it so we can save for allowed student not in lazy programmer let me just copy it for allow students not in suspended destiny then you should print the name of a student that's oh, okay you are not allowed you are not you are allowed so you can use for we can use, I think you can even use if so let's print the statement and see Let's see where am I getting in an error? somewhere today valid syntax allow students input and please enter your name Let me see, let me see what 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 did I do? If it's not if not in this Okay, okay, so good. So we have suspended students now allow students so what we are going to do we are going to compare this one to this one and see if it matches if the student is here a student cannot come as the student will not be allowed to suspend the student enter the name now if the name is not in here if the name is not here so you are allowed to else you have been suspended from the college 
let's enter it and see let's enter abena again so now you see that this guy abena is part of the suspended student but she wants to sniff and enter the class when she enters the name the system says that no 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 no, no you are not allowed so we use the not in function to do that we use the in function to find out if the person exists we use the not in if it doesn't if the person doesn't exist if you are a web developer you have name of users let's say band users and then you have a list of them see that oh these are the students these are users that have been banned let me see let me use this my best friend this guy and then another very very best friend Andrews, let me use Kwame over here. I want to ask a question. Okay. Yeah, the the suspended student, the the that the carry the bracket, or the or that bracket, is it an array? This one. Yes. It's it's a list. So we defined the list. You. We define the list, and then we keep all the. The student in that list. Then we check. So, so like a container. Yes, it it yes, it contains the list of suspended students. Okay. Should I go on? Yes. Yes. Okay. So now we have these are band users. And then what other name? Let me use this guys, Amanovi. These are band users. And you want to check that okay, this user is trying to log in. So let's see, user. Let's check if this guy is banned. So if user can be found in this folder, this list, and you have to tell the user to respect himself. else tell the person no oh, anything will come C R M let's see what happens we have this guy over here is it's been banned from the system. You have a list of users that you banned from entering your web application. He is there. He wants now he wants to come and enter. You want to make sure that every system, every user that enters your system is an authorized user. It's not a person or a user that you banned from your system. So what you do is that you check this user, does he exist over here? If he exists, you tell them. So when you come here, in a literal way, they are saying that if the user is found in 
or the username is found in the band name uh, names of users on the band list then you can't allow him but if not then the person can enter the person can use the system so if you realize if you see this place it uses the in fine if the person exists the person doesn't exist fine so let's say that let, let's take a restaurant for example you go to a restaurant and they ask you to you said okay you want a pizza or you want it you want uh kinky and hot pepper so you tell them okay you want kinky you want hot hot pepper you want fish what they are going to do is that they are going to check they have their menu over there and then your user request is also there so they check your user request against the menu then they start giving it to you they start giving it to you so let's see oh uh, rest trans menu so let's create a list of i love this one tilapia tilapia pepper kinky And then, oh, what again? Let's take a bottle of Coke. Let me add another one. Let's see, we have malt. And then they also have beer. And, okay, let's take it this way. Now, let's is the list this is a list containing all the items that they have over there so you know you are going to buy kinky so now user or uh, buyer you go there instead of okay what do you want to buy you want them to give you kinky kinky and you also want them to give you what tilapia you want small shitoka kra and then you want pepper so let me add good so this is what is going to happen the lady at the restaurant will go the waiter will check will go to the place and check oh do you have this thing if you have it oh fine so if by a request let me do it let me use order Then do the order and say this one. This one is even better, simpler. So, if what the buyer is ordering is in the list, so we use we have to find out if it's there. If it's in the restaurant, let me copy it, lazy programmer. Then it's going to print that, oh, okay. Let's add it. Add in what? So it's going to what is 
what we want to do is that it will check first the first order is kinky check do you have kinky yes if you have do you have tilapia check if you have add it do you have fito yes if you add it if you have it add it to it you have pepper yes if you have it, if you have it add it so it's going you're asking it to tell to do this thing this is what we are telling the system to do then you see when it's done oh let's print something and tell them enjoy your meal let's see what happens away enjoy your meal you buy it isn't this <laughs> what is wrong? This one is supposed to print. You have this. You have this. If this one isn't this, print add in this. This thing is supposed to print out. see something let me find something and do something else. No, 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 it can't be so. Cannot be so, cannot be so, cannot be so. Cannot be so. Let's use a different, let's use a different way for rest. And let me see. Why is the place silent? Are you guys there? Maybe for rest in this, if this is not in this. Errors are bound to happen in coding. Let's let's reduce it. Set so it's lap here. Yeah. This is what the restaurant has. Hello. Are we there? Hello. Okay, let me do it this way and see. Let me see something. What do I cost of this? If order is not not in
if the other kinky is not in this you don't have it else went Kinky is ready. Uh, is this one working? That one has to work. That one has to work. To work. Hello. Are we there? That one has to work. But I'm going to show you how to do it. The answer no, to that. Find the solution to that problem. And let's see. And now, let's see that I want to check multiple condition. I want to check multiple condition. Or let's say, let me say, I have age of water. We want to vote. And I say age is 18. And now. Oh shit, sorry. Now, we can check if the age is, is indeed 18. So if age is equal to, is greater or equals to 18. And we tell the person that, okay, the person is eligible to vote. Else, good. So the person enters the age. The person's age is eighteen or above. The person is able is eligible to vote. So if you are at the registration center, this person is coming to register. You know that the person qualify to be a voter. This is a single condition that he checked. Assuming we have multiple conditions that we want to check, we can say that, okay, we have age, age one equals to 10, age two equals to 20. We want to find out if age one, sorry, age one is as equals to ten let me use this one as a greater or equals to ten or 11 and age 2 is greater or equals to 20 then we print you must be in college we run it now it didn't print this one. Why? We are using the AND operator. The AND operator, the, lo the AND logic, what it does is that it makes sure that all the two sides are equal are, or are true. So you check if H1 is, is greater or less or greater or equals to 11. Is it true? Yes, it is greater than 10. It is greater than 11. So greater or equals to 11. But if you check here, it's not true. Age 1 is not greater than 11. It is not equals to 11. So the first condition, it has failed. Now the other one is age 2. Is it greater or equals to 20? This one has passed. 
but it needs all the two to be true before it can print out. So you have a system. You want to check the username and the password. Or you've created password one and password two. You want to check are they equal? You can use it. Now assuming that you are using an all operator. Now you must be in college. It was able to print the same command, the same code. However, the logic here changed. This one uses the all, and this one is using the logic and what it means is that it only needs one condition to be fulfilled. And one condition is satisfied. Finito. Finish. So if H1 is equal to or greater than 11, or a 2 is greater or equals to 20, it should print it. You must be in college. So when you check, you use the logical or you realize, oh, okay, it satisfies the condition. It printed out. So that is how the or the and does. Now, if you are writing, when you are writing the if condition or an if statement. You write the keyword if, then your condition that you want to test. Then what is happening to me? Now you're asking it if a condition, you put the condition over here, it should do something. So long as the condition set is true, it will continue doing something. So long as it's true, it will continue. So, so long as this and this are true, it is going to continue. So you can say that, okay, let's write a simple if statement. If, let's say, amount person comes to buy and you want to check that if the amount is greater than 20 then you $20 you are giving the person a discount so amount is 20 so if amount is greater or equals to you are using greater so let's use greater and let's use it. so if the amount is greater or equals to $20 we tell the person, or oh, you qualify for for a discount. So the person comes to buy. You are the supermarket to check how much is the person buying. The person bought twenty something, which amounts to twenty dollars. So you check. If the amount is greater or equals to twenty dollars, the person qualifies for discount. Else, the person doesn't qualify. So, when you go to a, a shopping mall, they tell you, you buy one, you buy two, they'll give you free. So they make sure that okay, if the number you are buying, so number bought is equal to two. Now you come and check that because you want the person to always buy more than one. So you check if the number bought is okay, let's say is equal to two. Then we tell the person. You qualify for an 
additional one so what happens a check the number but you are buying two apples it, it goes to check are you buying more than two yes and tells you okay you qualify for this they have we have the not so you come and define it you say if let me copy it let's see code if the normal bot you use the exclamation sign equals to this and you bring the equal sign so if the normal bot is not equals to two then you tell me ah my guy sorry you do not qualify for an additional item why is it not outputting if number but okay let me see let me see number but equals to two yes so now it is not output because it is still picking from here because the number bot is already two so if you either come in overwrite it over here you overwrite it over here then sorry you do not qualify for an additional item if you don't overwrite it it's going to pick from here it will always go back and go and check but oh okay the items you bought as this let's say you're in the banking hall the person is coming to cash we do a cash what happens is the system checks the amount you want to withdraw against what you have in your account if what you are withdrawing is more than what you have in your account it tells you the money you are withdrawing is much much more than what you have or you do not qualify for such an amount so let's use the banking system and see let's say balance equals to let's say hundred dollars and then we want to withdraw equals to twelve let's say twelve hundred. <clears throat> we want to withdraw twelve hundred. You have to check your system and see. You don't just give it to the person. So you see that. If the balance is less than the withdrawal amount, it could it could you, you can write it the other way around. You can even see if, if the balance is the withdrawal is greater than the balance or the balance is lesser than so it will you are writing your code so you have to write it as simple as you can very simple don't make it complex your balance let's see so what happens is that it is going to check okay this is my balance you have a balance of hundred dollars and you are coming to withdraw this so okay let's make it very simple sorry
uh, to make it lively you can't hey this thing that i said so if i want to bring okay yes. so so that you can't withdraw withdraw and bring it here and then let me concatenate it it's a string it it it's an int so we have to use the string concatenation to convert it so you can't redraw this wood so let me the dollar sign so sorry you can't redraw 1200 dollars from the account so let's see let's add another one you can only redraw less than 100 so we bring a string concatenation then we bring a balance i are just calling the variable so you are telling the person you can't redraw 1200 it's too much you don't have it you can only redraw less than 100 so this is how you use the if statement you can use it in any way so long as your condition is satisfied we have the if else oh, let me copy this one and come and paste it here And then we are checking if the balance is this. So let's see if the balance is two, let's see 200. Let me increase this one to 1100. And then we bring the if else before that. You see that if then you bring your condition to test you bring your column and you tell the system to do something else you should do something first then check your condition if it satisfy do something if it doesn't go here so you are going to open your door you enter you get to the entrance you pick a key you just pick a random key you check as you going to open it didn't open so what do you do it has to you have to change the key so you continue until you're able to open so it balance as 1100 withdrawal as 200 you are going to check if you print this one this condition should not print this statement should not print because the amount you are redrawing it's far far less than the balance and so you should be able to redraw so you, what you do is you bring the else then don't always forget to indent and bring your column to so you tell else Please take your money. Thanks for doing business with us. 
let's see what happens so this one works perfectly all right because we check this is the balance the person has 1100 the person is just coming to withdraw 200 dollars so you check okay is the balance less than the withdrawal amount if it is tell the person oh my guy you are going too far else give the person's money to him or her so this is what happens in the banking sector they check so the if else does it let's say that you are oh what do i do what see you operate a mall or an online business and do delivery okay good students are coming to buy admission form you want to check their age to be able to be able to tell how much you are going to sell to the person so the student can so let's define student age let's say that student age is 18 that is the age of the student or you can better ask the student to enter his or age so let me see let me use the input function over here please enter your age first so the student is going to enter the age now you are come you have you are to sell to at a certain price to some student you check and see that okay the price is going to be dependent on the age so let's see that if let me copy this thing if student age is equal to this is let's see is less than uh, 18 so what do you do if the student age is less than 18 then you give the person the form for free so the cost of admission form is free for your age now you check again if the student age is equal to 18 then you sell the admission form at twenty dollars so you tell the person cost of admission form s twenty dollars or twenty dollars ninety nine cents you have different category of ages so you check again if student age is let's say greater or equals to 20 then you tell the person cost of admission for S99 99 cent a 
I know there's going to be an error. There's going to be an error over here because this thing is taking string. Let me see. Let me see. I'm not sure. So let's say 18. Yes. So let me first, first convert this thing over here. Let me convert it straight. So now, student age is 18. So it is telling it, ah, how, how will you write such a code? The person is 18. They are charging $20. 29, that is $21. The person is 20 and above. Ah. Oh, okay, 99. That's okay, yes. So, this is what you are doing. You can use an L if. Sorry. Which is the same as else if. So. The best. So it's going to check. As the age eight eighteen. Else. This. Else. This. To so twenty. So the cost of admission is 99.9, .9. cents. We wish you all the best. So over here, you see that you are, using, you are utilizing the if and then the else. You can write multiple if else anyhow you want to. So let's say that I want to calculate the shipping cost, which I won't do because time as well. You want to calculate the shipping cost depending on where the item is going. You could simply use an if else to check if the item is going to America, else is the amount it should, it should charge. If it's going to Canada, if it's going to Ghana, if it's going to wherever, this is the amount it should charge depending on the location. So Today, we've, we've dealt with the if or the conditional statement. You've not done so much because we, we, we spent so much, much of the time 